Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So I'm starting to wonder if there's some type of special store that makes copies for state lawmakers. Like they walk into the store and they're like, hey, you know, the people in my state have too many freedoms, too many rights. I don't like they have a First Amendment. I don't like they have a Second Amendment. I should be the only one that has any power in my state. What can I do about it? And they just kind of guide them over to the California printer and then say, go ahead and take one of these. Just take, uh, they take the California name off it, put your state on it, and uh, we'll run you off a bunch of copies. And that could be your new state law because that's pretty much exactly what Washington did with their newly passed assault weapons ban. Looks just like California's, except it actually names things out. So they added a little bit of extra. So let's go ahead and talk about this new assault weapons ban that has now hit Washington State. Hey, real quick, before we get started, thank you all very much for watching these videos. I really do appreciate it. I have the absolute best subscribers on the internet. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and join the community. It's free. Hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification to let you know when new videos come out. And check out the comment section because that's usually where a lot of the action happens. So again, thanks for watching and let's get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on here with the passage of HB 1240. Now, for those of you who are watching this, who are kind of new to the game, you're new to the fact that the government does not like the Second Amendment, you may not understand some of the terminology that they use. So understand that when I say or refer to the assault weapons ban, there's no such thing. It, do, it does not exist. If you were to take a look at the list of factoring criteria that they use to justify their ban, because they don't like anything that has that scary name, right? If you take a look at the list of items that they have here, it's just parts of a semi-automatic centerfire rifle. That's it. But it doesn't have the same effect, right? It doesn't have the same effect as the terminology that they would like to use that has a psychological effect to on those who really don't support the Second Amendment anyway. It makes it just even stronger to them. So if you're kind of new to this, understand that's just something that they use in order to make it seem worse. Okay, so let's go and talk about HB 1240, which has already passed the House. Now, it also has a companion bill, which is currently in the Senate, making its way through. It doesn't look like it's going to have any problem passing there either. So we have a Democrat majority in both the House and the Senate in Washington State, and you also have Governor Inslee. Now, Governor Inslee says that he fully supports this. As a matter of fact, he's been promoting it, he's been pushing for it, and you know how they like to satisfy the governor, so they're going to try and, now that the House has passed it, the Senate's going to try and push it through as fast as possible so that it can be signed by the governor. Now, not only is the governor pushing for these, but he's bragging that he was one of the ones that voted for the 94 Clinton ban. So he says that he was able to get it done on a national level and that there should be no problem getting it done in the state of Washington. Now, these are two, these two companions bills are very terrible bills. These bills are lengthy. They are very strict in the way that they're written. They ban things out by names. They specifically say that they ban anything that is AK type and anything that is AR type. And then they go on to list manufacturers, names, models, everything else. They also go on to list all of the factoring criteria. Anything that has a detachable magazine that can accept more than 10 rounds. Again, almost a carbon copy of what California has. Any of the features like barrel shrouds, flash adders, compensators, things like that. Any one of these two items included with the detachable magazine or so forth will all land it underneath this ban. So there's a lot of things that are affected here, not just uh, your centerfire. This is also going to affect uh, your rim fires, right? So your Ruger 1022s, things like that are going to be affected. Semi-automatic shotguns also going to be affected by this. Now in this bill, there is a grandfather clause or what I like to call a grandfather scheme. So they're saying that if you have something, you could keep it for now, but no further generations are going to be able to experience this, right? No further generations are going to be able to get what they want and what they should be allowed to have. We're just simply banning it from everybody moving forward. The manufacturer, the sale, the transport, the importation, all of that is going to be banned. As a matter of fact, you're not even going to have be able to have the components. Uh, according to this bill, you're not even going to be able to have the components to assemble one. Uh, even the magazine kits, so replacement kits, if it comes with a spring and a follower and that stuff, you're not even going to be allowed to have those, okay? Because those could be used to change things and make things into fully functional the way they should be stuff. So there's a lot of things in this bill that go a little bit of a, a step further than some other states, but again, are a carbon copy of what already exists 
in the state of California. Now, if it sounds like I'm mad about this one, I, I am. I'm done, absolutely done seeing this happen now across the country. There's a lot of people out there that keep telling me, when is the Supreme Court gonna act on this? When is the Supreme Court gonna step up and stop these things from happening? Well, one thing you need to understand is that these states are already violating Supreme Court law. They're already violating Supreme Court precedent every single time they write and pass bills like this. Well, you could say, how is how can that be? I mean, the Supreme Court's never really talked about, you know, these types of bans specifically and how they should be treated. Well, think about it. In Heller, they already said that anything that's in common use for lawful purposes is already protected by the Second Amendment. That includes these. You know, this is the most popular rifle in America, right? So it's obviously in, in common use. There's tens and tens of millions of them already out there and a vast majority of them are used for lawful purposes and we're talking about a vast majority are used for lawful purposes so you have something that's in common use for lawful purposes and under helen mcdonald bruin through through all of these cases they've already told the lower courts they've already told the states and anybody else who wants to pass a ban like this that you can't these are protected by the second amendment they so <laughs> That's, that's why I'm kind of angry here, is that the Supreme Court has already said you cannot do this just based on those factoring criteria alone. They're in common use for lawful purposes, and therefore, they are covered. They're constitutionally protected. But what do these states do? They do it anyway. So Washington, on top of their mag ban that they re recently passed, which we all knew was just the beginning of the end in Washington, right? On top of that, now they're just going after just about everything. So if you have, let's say, a shotgun and it has a collapsible stock on it, just that alone right there. That If it has a grip stock, you're done. It goes after a wide variety of things. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link down below. If you want to read specifically what it's going to go after, you can go ahead and you can read it for yourself. You kind of have to scroll down a bit just past the definitions. Once you get past the definitions, it will tell you exactly what they're talking about and what is by, banned by name and stuff like that. Now, one thing that I want to mention here about this bill and, and a lot of other bills, not every bill, but a lot of other bills that I've seen across the country and federally is that they always like to use the term military style, right? As if to say that we're not allowed to have anything that's military style. That's not the case whatsoever. If you go back to the founding, everything was military style. So if the Second Amendment is allowed to move and evolve with time, just like the First Amendment is allowed to move and evolve with time through computers and telephones and the internet and, you know, you, you name it, right? It's, a, it's allowed to evolve through time. Then how is it that we were not only allowed to, but encouraged to have military style weapons or actual military weapons of the day? until you get to today where it's like that's that's no longer acceptable that was the second amendment then it should remain the same now that is not a valid argument every time you hear that argument that it's you know because it's military style the the it's gone right the argument's gone that context does not work because again you have to go back to the founding of the country to to see the way that things were when the Second Amendment was written and they should still apply to today. So it's based off of cosmetic features, it's based off of other reasons, but the reasons they actually give you. If you look at the reasons they give you, wipe those away because those are not the actual reasons why they're passing these laws. Now there is a bright side to this if there is a bright side to laws or you know supposed laws like this. They like to call them laws even though they violate law. But there is somewhat of a bright side, and that's that the Washington State is covered by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Currently, there is a similar ban that is going to be before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals soon. Judge Benitez, who is a district court judge in Southern California, is more than likely any, any day now going to rule that California's ban is unconstitutional, at which point it'll have to go up to the Ninth Circuit. I don't think it's going to make it to the Supreme Court. I don't think that Newsom is going to try and push it that far because then it would have an effect on the entire country. He wants to keep it locally, but I think that the Ninth Circuit is going to rule, or they have to rule post-Bruin, that this uh, ban in California is also unconstitutional. If the Ninth Circuit does that, that covers Washington State, it covers Oregon, it covers a lot of these West Coast states that have done similar things. So even though lawsuits are going to be filed pretty much immediately uh, once the governor signs these into law, you're going to see lawsuits pop up just, I mean, instantly, right? 
But uh, not only are you going to see those lawsuits instantly, but you, you have at least the peace of mind knowing that a lawsuit that is going to affect your state through the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has already been going for years and years and made it through pretty much the entire process. So I think that uh, while you, you know, you're probably going to see something soon, you'll get relief quicker than people, let's say, in California who've been experiencing this now for decades. So uh, it doesn't mean you stop the fight. You got to keep up the fight. Make sure that you, know, you do your part. But when it comes time to actually put these people in office, pay attention to what you're doing. If you just usually sit at home and you don't do anything, maybe it's time to get out and start you know, putting your name out there and letting them know that this is not something that you would stand for. Start making those phone calls. Start sending those emails. Start letting these people know that, hey, you continue to do this type of stuff. You're not going to have a job next year. You know, that's the one thing that they care about the most is that they have a job, they have a seat, and they feel like it's going to be forever. Well, if the voting demographics change in that state, you're going to see a lot of change start to happen. So it, now's not the time to just sit back on the couch and let this type of stuff happen. There, there needs to be more of a movement to make sure that every state across the country just stops trying to do things like this, which is really just violating the Constitution. They're, they're already breaking the law to do what they're doing now. So anyway, I just want to let you guys know that that happened. It passed the House uh, in in Washington State. It's going to pass the Senate just based off of, you know, how, how many D's and how many R's are in the Senate in that state. And then obviously the governor has already said he's, he's willing and excited to sign it. So uh, again, just Stay on top of this one. That's that's what you got to do. We'll see what happens from there. But uh, it's already a violation of the Constitution, so we know it will be overturned. But it's a matter of how long. How long are people going to have to go through this until they get a little bit of relief? Hopefully not long. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, and you guys have a great day.